Alkyl halides can also be made from alkenes, and this is something that we, we know. We have taken this before when we talked about the uh, alkenes and their reactions. We take the general structure of alkenes like this. We learned before that alkenes undergo electrophilic addition reactions with HX. So if you add HX to an alkene, then an alkyl halide is produced. And if you remember, following Markov Lukov's rule, yeah? Okay, so an alkene in general can react with HX in general, a halogen acid, following Markov Lukov's rule, and an alkyl halide is produced. So carbon or hy hydrogen. Um, uh, from HX would bond to carbon with more hydrogens or less alkyl substituents, and X from HX would bond to carbon with less hydrogens or more alkyl substituents. This is following Markov Nikov's rule. So, some, this is a reaction that is known. Yeah? We know this that alkenes undergo electrophilic addition reactions with HX to make an alkyl halide. That's obviously an alkyl halide, and this is obviously an alkene. Yeah? So this is an alkene, and this is an alkyl halide. This is one way to make alkyl halides from alkenes, okay? But also we know that alkenes undergo addition reactions with halogens. So you can add, we can add X2, like bromine, when you added bromine to cyclohexene. If the test of unsaturation was, was, was desired to test for the if the chemical was unsaturated or not, the amount of bromine is orange in color. If it's added to a test tube containing a small amount of an alkene, which maybe is colorless, then the uh, orange color of bromine disappeared instantly, is indicative of an instantaneous reaction between the alkene and the halogen. So, halogens add to alkenes to make, not to make. Um, if you like normal alkyl halides or alkyl halides that contain a single halogen or one halogen, but rather dihalides are obtained in this case. So a dihalides can be obtained if a halogen adds to, to an alkene. So these two reactions are known to us when we talked about the chemistry of alkenes. The alkyl halides can be obtained by addition of HX2 alkenes or addition of X2 also to, to alkenes. Another method is to take an alkene, but this time you don't add an HX molecule or X2, but you add a reagent such as MBS. If we take um, cyclohexene, if you take cyclohexene, for example, we will talk about details of this reaction. If, we talk, if you take cyclohexene, we can generalize it, by the way, to an alkene, okay? And then we react this with MBS, MBS, MBS is N-bromo-6-cinamide, N-bromo-6-cinamide. It's a bromine source in the presence of light, yeah? Okay, so NBS in the presence of light and the the a reaction actually takes place, a reaction that is different from the uh, previous electrophilic addition reactions of alkenes. A bromination reaction takes place, and interestingly, it takes place not on the carbon carbon double bond, but on this position, position one, two, three, if you like, and that position three is described as allylic, allylic position. So a bromination, therefore, at the allylic position, a bromination at the allylic position here. So this position, position three, if you remember the, the, the cycle like this, one, two, three, this position is described as allylic. And that's why this reaction is described as allylic bromination. This reaction is described as allylic bromination because the bromination reaction takes place at the allylic position in an alkene. Allylic position is position number three. If you remember 
the carbon carbon double bond beginning with carbon one as shown. That position number three is described as the allylic position. This reaction is allylic bromination. The reagent that is used of the bromine salts that is used in this case is not bromine as we discussed also a while ago, but rather MBS. MBS is the bromine salts. This is the structure, by the way, of MBS. It's M bromo six cinnamide. This is an bromo six cinnamide. Okay, so it is N bromo N bromo six cinnamide. The origin of the abbreviation is N B S N B S. So N bromo six cinnamide is abbreviated as. Uh, MBS, this is the structure. This is a bromine source. So the initial, the first step actually in this reaction, by the way, is breakage of the NB, NBR bond homolytically to form a six cinnamide radical and a bromine radical. And then the reaction is initiated in propagation steps until eventually uh, bromocyclohexene is obtained. This is the allylic bromination. We will take more examples of this reaction. So a good question would be, why does the allylic bromination take place at the allylic position? Why does it take place at position 3? Well, this has to, be, has to do with the stability of the uh, uh, intermediates involved in this reaction. And this reaction is radical. So let, let's talk about that, yeah? Okay? Now, if, in the, if, we, ta if we take cyclohexene again, if we take the cyclohexene example, and if you remember, we reacted this with, with MBS in the presence of, of light. Uh, this bromo or allylic bromination product is, is obtained, yeah? Okay? So if this reaction or if this product is obtained or if the bromination, allylic bromination took place at that position, obviously, then this, radical, this intermediate radical must have been produced. This radical must have been produced. So basically, breakage of the allylic CH bond. So that CH bond here is the allylic CH bond. Okay, this is the allylic CH bond. And it is the weakest bond, by the way. This is the weakest bond possible in cyclohexene. It is weaker than the vinylic CH bond here, and also than the uh, alkyl CH bond on this side. This is the weakest bond. This is also why, this is one reason why the reaction, or the bromination reaction, takes place at, the, at that position, or the allylic, at the allylic position. When that CH bond is broken, it is broken homolytically again, yeah? So an a radical at the, uh, at the allylic position is formed. This is called an allylic, Allylic radical or radical at the at the allylic position. Now, it's it's uh, this radical has to be stable. Okay? This radical has to be stable for uh, reasonable allylic bromination to to take place. So therefore, this intermediate must have must have some stability. Of course, this CH bond, the allylic CH bond, is the weakest. That's one reason. The second reason is is the stability of the corresponding allylic radical. Now, if you, pay, if you pay attention to this, to, to, to this radical, you will notice that this can actually be stabilized by, by, by resonance. This allylic radical can be stabilized by resonance. So a resonance, therefore, is one reason behind the stability of the allylic Radical resonance is one reason behind the stability of the allylic radical. So this is resonance stabilization. And this, what makes this allylic radical stable? And this is one reason why the allylic bromination takes place at the allylic position. This, all of this can also be preceded by the uh, respective bond dissociation energy or bond strength 
of the aligning CH bond. The aligning CH bond is the weakest CH bond in this molecule, and that's why it's, it's broken. And when it's broken under these conditions, it's broken homolytically to give uh, radicals, and the radical then would be uh, an allylic radical. The allylic radical is then stabilized by resonance. So this is an explanation as to why allylic bromination takes place at that position, uh, specifically at the, at the allylic position. Let me now take another example. Like this, if we take this alkene, okay, this alkene is not cyclic, by the way. This is acyclic. And you watch out for this, because the radical, the allylic radical is stabilized by resonance, yeah? So this is very important to take into account. When we take uh, uh, alkenes which are, which are acyclic, and also not symmetrical. So alkene, and then react, is reacted with, with NBS in the presence of, of light. You would expect the reaction to take place at the allylic position, and the allylic position obviously would be position number three with respect to the, to the rubber bond. So definitely that would be one of the products that is obtained in this case. So this is the, the first product that is obtained in this case, but it's not the only product, by the way, and that's because of the resonance stabilization of the uh, intermediate allylic, allylic radical. So this product is obtained, but also another one is obtained as a result of the resonance stabilization. So this would be that, that product. The intermediate allylic radical that's obtained in this case would be this one. So this allylic radical will give rise to that, to that product, but also this allylic radical will undergo uh, or will be stabilized by resonance. Yeah? So if we do resonance stabilization, then we will get the um, other resonance fold, the other um, allylic radical, which will then give rise to the, the, the Second product shown, yeah. So this this allylic radical will give rise to that to this product shown. So this is an example which which illustrates uh, basically the fact that more than one product is obtained if the alkene is a cyclic. If the alkene is cyclic, like in simple cyclic like seed, okay, one product is obtained because the compound is symmetrical. But this compound is acyclic, and because of the uh, resonance stabilization of the allylic radical, a mixture of products is obtained in this case.